Okay, first time doing this hawk now thing at home. What do I do first? Ah, yes, lamps. Perfect. Ah, yes, camera. There, okay. All right. Action. What's up, Windhawks? My name's AC, and this is Dad. I'm doing Hawk now. Come on. Whatever, just go away. Just go. All right, try it again. What's up, Windhawks? My name's AC, and this Main is review. Review. Gavin. Review. What are you doing? I'm watching. What do you mean you're freaking watching meme review? I'm freaking filming Hawk now here. For once, can you let me just do something alone for five minutes? Oh my god. We're glad to have you with us in this strange time to be a student at Winona Senior High, or any high school for that matter. We're going to start this episode off in the first ever virtual Hawk Now interview with Mr. Feldman. What's up, Winhawks? What you are about to witness is the first ever virtual Hawk Now interview. Now, Mr. Feldman, you just must be so honored. Oh, absolutely, AC. You know, this has been a dream of mine since I was little to be the first ever on Hawk Now. Thank for anything. You so much. So, yeah. Now, the reason why I brought you here is I really want to talk to you about uh, what's going on in this new situation. And I wanted to first discuss this at a staff member's point of view. How well do you think you guys have adapted to this situation? And I'm curious to ask, um, how did you guys react when you first were told and realized that this is how you'd be teaching from now into an indefinite point of time? Well, I think as far as how we reacted, um, we weren't necessarily happy because we miss you guys. You know, yeah. we want to see you. Uh, one way that I kind of explained it to a coworker is that doing this distance learning took a lot of the things that I enjoy most about teaching and took them away. So yeah. I don't get to have those daily interactions, get to see you guys, have those little conversations because yeah. that's a lot of the fun stuff. Absolutely. I, I, to that, I totally agree. Yeah. I think most teachers feel the same way. So we weren't necessarily happy. Um, yeah but we did have that time that you guys were off extra time after spring break to kind of prepare uh, for some teachers. It worked very well with their subject material to kind of do this distance learning format. Uh, other teachers, it's much more of a struggle trying to figure out how does this work? Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially things like art where you don't have the supplies at home that you would need. Yeah. So it really depends on the course as far as how well it works, but Unfortunately, we don't have a choice. We're just doing the best we can with all this. Yeah, and that goes for students too. Um, some students can adapt to this situation, no problem. But some Absolutely. students can really struggle with this. Like for I, for one, have the little brother problem. You know, it's really hard for me to work and not be distracted with him roaming around. And I got lots of other people in my house as well. And I'm sure lots of other students are in a similar situation as that. What advice could you give to those students just to help them find that perfect study spot, you know? Well, I think one of the big things is you need a space that you can create as close to a classroom environment as possible. Um, so that does mean that there's no siblings around. Uh, maybe that means you close your door and you make sure that your cat or dog is outside of the room. Um, create a space that is as close to what you would have in a classroom as possible. Yeah. Um, make sure the TV isn't on. Make sure you don't have music playing in the background. Try and recreate that classroom environment to the best of your ability. Yeah, and one thing, uh, uh, basements do a great job. That's where I'm at right now. I just take, yep, I took a table me. from the dining room and I'm here. This is my spot and it's, it's quite fun. But yep. um, some students with, you know, not the best study habits can really be exposed in this new format now that it's pretty much all on them. What advice Absolutely. could you give to just students in general to help them stay motivated and determined in this new time? Well, I think one of the biggest things is that you need to basically create your own schedule. Um, you know, we've kind of scheduled your morning for you a little bit on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of things that are expected of you outside of that time. And if you just say, well, I'll do it whenever, 
it's really easy to go down the YouTube rabbit hole and suddenly yeah. five hours are gone. Yeah, you know, so one episode of Hawk that, Now and you're finished, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. So I think that it's best if you schedule a side time and yeah. you say from, you know, one o'clock until two o'clock, I'm going to work on my science class. And then I'm going to take a 30 minute break and I'm going to watch YouTube or I'm going to spend some time on social media or whatever it is that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then at 2.30 again, you're going to get back to work and you're going to work on your English. So actually creating that schedule and writing it down to kind of hold yourself accountable is the biggest advice that I would give to anyone who feels like they might struggle with all the freedom you have. Yeah. And that's another thing I've been doing. I just don't, I don't do all my homework at once. Right. You know, I totally, you know, I go on for an hour and a half and then I maybe take an hour break. You know, yeah. lots of times I go outside and lately with this wonderful weather, I've been doing my homework outside. And mm -hmm. I think that's really helped, you know, moving locations once in a while to keep things interesting. Yeah. Leaving and then your another timely important. question to ask is, do you think we as students are losing anything in this new format? Well, I think it really depends on the student and how diligent you are. Um, that social interaction is huge. We mm -hmm. as human beings are social creatures. We need interaction with other people. So you need to make a point to reach out to your friends. Maybe you have a Zoom chat with your friend group. Um, you know, maybe you do a virtual game night with everyone. You know, you can play an online game together. You can do, you know, whatever it is, but you need that interaction with people. Yeah. And it's important that you actually see people, which is why things like Zoom are good because you can see their face. Um, yeah. So that's really one of the biggest things that I feel like we're losing. Um, you know, just all of those interactions that are huge and important. Yeah, I really do believe for everyone involved in this, you know, preschoolers and high schoolers, middle schoolers, everyone. I think this will be the time where everyone really realizes and really learns to value school. You know, yeah. everyone. Because I've been, I was been, I've been bored out of my mind, and I, I just miss, I miss being in the tech nest room recording Hawk now. I just, yeah, I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. And then another yeah. good question to ask as well is, do you think we are gaining anything in this kind of format? Because lots of people do this kind of online schooling. Do you mm -hmm. think there's any advantage to learning in this kind of way? Well, I think there's a few things, and you just touched on one of them. Um, you're gaining an appreciation for what you used to have, some of the things that you used to take for granted, um, those little interactions. Uh, for a lot of people, they're realizing that I actually miss school, which I think if we went back three months and said, do you think you ever would miss school? Most people would say no. Um, yeah. But I think we're starting to realize that maybe you gain a little appreciation for what people in the school do for you on a regular basis. So that's yeah. one piece is that appreciation. Um, the bigger piece, especially for our upperclassmen, our juniors and seniors, is you guys are getting a kind of preemptive taste of what college is like, where you have just a few hours a day that are scheduled for you, and then you need to figure out how do you make the rest of your life work. Yeah. So you're getting kind of a little preview of college that we don't necessarily always get. So mm -hmm. you have a little bit from your teachers, a little help, but you really need to take that initiative to get additional help. You need to make sure you're the one who is scheduling and doing your stuff. So you're getting that little preemptive taste. And okay. then the other piece is you have that flexibility that you don't always have otherwise. Yeah. So like you're saying, you want to go outside and study. Well, you go outside and study. You know, you have that freedom. So that's kind of nice. All right. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us, Mr. Feldman. And a reminder to all students, stay focused, stay determined, and stay motivated. And remember, as generic as I know it may sound, we're all in this together. And I only say this again because it's true. Thank you very much for meeting with us today, Mr. Feldman. You're welcome, AC. Hope everyone has a great day. Let's take a moment to look at a really cool event called STEM Night. Kevin! What are you doing? Why are you walking there? There's a camera here. This costs more than your life. For Pete's sakes, just leave. Gosh darn, what is with that kid? All right, everything's still working. Everything looks fine. I don't know how much longer I can do this, honestly. This is just horrible. Let's take a moment to look at a really cool event called STEM Night, a time where elementary students can take a look at the future technological activities they can look forward to do once they get to high school.
aware that with all the unfortunate things going on in the world, it can get tough sometimes. Which is why we put in our special good news segment in this episode with Mr. Lewick. Let's go check that out. Mr. Lewick, you are ranked number three overall for ranking in the most money. And that means you're getting a pie on your face. What's going through your head before this moment's going to occur? I'm a little, a little scared. A little scared? I'm hoping my uh, nose stays intact <laughs> yeah. and that I can see afterwards. But other than that, very excited. And overall, why did you choose to volunteer to be involved in this? Because uh, it's for a good cause, and I would like to support the good cause. Anything I could do, yeah. even if it means getting yeah. a pie in the face, I would like to You'll do, do it. it. Sure. All right. Thank. Good luck, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're good, Brayden. We're good. <laughs> testing, Mike. Testing. All right. They all work. Here we go. All right. Let's go. All right, Mr. Lewick. What emotions went through your head on the moment of impact? This month for you. I was actually surprised on how cold the uh, filling is. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, you are shivering a little bit. And yeah. overall, was it worth it putting your name on that list for FFA? Absolutely. All right. Great cause. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Lord. you. We really appreciate it. Put it there. Good job, kiddo. That's all we got for you this week, Windhawks. And always make sure to be sure to check Schoology because now it means more than ever. And as always, stay classy, Windhawks. Main review. Main review. Main review.